Nicholas Lawrence, a dedicated and accomplished free diver, decodes to start setting another national record in the vertical blue competition's free immersion category, where he would dive without fins. He intended to reach a height of 315 feet, but at 223 feet, he began to experience difficulties that put both his record-breaking effort and his life in danger. Freediving is an underwater diving technique that relies on holding one's breath rather than utilizing breathing equipment like scuba gear. It is also known as breath hold diving or skin diving. It entails entering the water and emerging from it without the aid of outside air sources. Free divers are regarded as extreme athletes since they can dive without using an oxygen tank higher than 328 feet, which is the height of a 30-story skyscraper. Due to the extreme water pressure they encounter at such depths, the diver's heart rate begins to slow down, their blood vessels close, and their lungs swell to the size of an orange. The most accomplished free divers in the world compete at the yearly championship event known as Vertical Blue, also known as the famous freediving tournament. William Trubridge, a well-known free diver, and his group are in charge of setting up this contest. They have been holding freediving competitions at the amazing Dean's Blue Hole on Long Island, Bahamas, since 2008. This small opening has one of the world's deepest underwater caverns at a depth of 663 feet. Nicholas Lawrence Mevely, 32, a resident of Williamsburg, Brooklyn, New York, was born in Dunedin, Florida. He worked as a prop technician for prominent productions, including the Comedy Central series Chappelle's Show and the CW series Gossip Girl, while pursuing his profession in New York's film and television business. He also participated actively in Rising Sun Performance Company, where he performed plays and performed his acting, technical, and writing skills. He has a significant part in the independent movie Exist from 2004. Nicholas began his experience in the sport when he entered the competitive freediving scene in 2012. He succeeded by winning the title at Deja Blue, a comparable competition that was conducted in the Cayman Islands that year. His abilities persisted as he triumphed in Curacao once more in 2014. Additionally, he achieved a solid third-place result at the Caribbean Cup in Roten, Honduras, a competition that was dominated by William Trubridge, the owner of Vertical Blue. At the Global Championships held in Greece, Nicholas also won a bronze medal in the constant weight without fins category. Nicholas made history in May 2013 when he became the first American diver to reach a depth of 328 feet on their own. He used a monofin for this amazing dive, which he finished in 3 minutes and 45 seconds. A sled is used in this specific type of freediving to allow divers to descend to depths that are outside their comfort zones. Nicholas came to the Bahamas with confidence and an ambitious aim in mind to set another national record following his record-breaking performance and rapid ascent in the sport. This time, he focused on the free immersion division and attempted to descend 315 feet. 34 competitors from 16 different nations competed in the Vertical Blue Tournament, which was held on November 17, 2013. The athletes competed in three different competitive categories. Divers in the constant weight category descended to depth by using a monofin and dolphin kicking tactics. Competitors in the second category, known as free immersion, used a rope to lower themselves underwater and then rise to the surface without the use of fins. Nicholas wants to take on the category that is the most difficult and demanding. The constant weight without fins dive comes next, where participants dive without the use of any fins at all. On his back, floating in the clear, gorgeous sea, Nicholas was attempting to unwind. As he was almost ready to jump into Dean's blue hole, he could hear his gasps. He set out to dive to a depth of 236 feet in one breath without the aid of fins or additional oxygen. In an effort to get as much oxygen into his lungs as possible, he began to breathe deeply. With five safety divers, 15 other athletes, spectators, and observers surrounding him at 12.25 p.m., he turned and dove underwater. He dove in headfirst, 
like a human arrow shooting into the night. Sonar was being used by the staff at Vertical Blue to monitor and report on Nicholas's progress, up until he ran across issues and seemed to be turning around at a depth of 223 feet. Everything was going according to plan. He decided to dive down again in an effort to fulfill this objective and set a new American record. Nevertheless, rather than ascending to the surface, realizing that his choice might not have been the best one, some of his teammates began to feel apprehensive. This is due to the difficulty and risk of diving to such depths without fins. Despite being in great pain, Nicholas made the decision not to beg for help, and after a dive that lasted 3 minutes and 38 seconds, he was able to reach the surface on his own. But things quickly took a horrific turn. He quickly took off his goggles while continuing to give the oak sign and attempted to follow the necessary surface protocol to officially declare his effort by declaring, I am okay. He was not well, regrettably. His eyes were wide and vacant, and his speech was muddled. He lost consciousness and fell into the water after more than 30 seconds. Although participants in this sport occasionally lose consciousness for a little period of time, his position seemed to persist considerably longer, which was quite terrible for him. Nicholas was swiftly hoisted onto a nearby platform by five safety divers, including an Australian paramedic who were all trained in life support procedures. Barbara Jeshk, the event doctor, started trying to revive him right away. During various phases of the dive, one of the safety divers, Marco Cosentino, who was in charge of aiding competitors in need, spotted a problem with Nicholas's lung and immediately alerted the others. Nicholas was immediately flipped onto his side and blood began to pour from his mouth onto the platform before mixing with the water below. His left eardrum was first thought to have ruptured, but Barbara, the event doctor, performed a physical assessment and found that his ear was oak. Instead, it was found that he had suffered from an upper respiratory squeeze which happens when the body's capillaries rupture as a result of the pressure applied at tremendous depths. In this sport, numerous competitors experienced sinus or tracheal squeezes, but were still permitted to compete the following day. It is usual for athletes to emerge from dives with nosebleeds. At first, Nicholas' pulse fluctuated between being weak and strong. However, his pulse stopped after 15 minutes. The crew started rigorous cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, procedures as soon as they rapidly removed his wetsuit. Nicholas was not brought back to life for the next 90 minutes despite three adrenaline doses being given on the spot. Nicholas was carefully placed into a Honda station wagon, which was used as the event's impromptu ambulance after being moved from the platform to the beach using a bodyboard. It took about 10 minutes to get to the American Missionaries Vid Sims Memorial Health Center. The safety team, commanded by Ren Chapman, Joe Knight, and Barbara, alternated between performing CPR throughout the entire trip. When they arrived at the clinic, a nearby physician joined them, and the resuscitation efforts went on. As soon as Nicholas arrived at the clinic, other sportsmen and their families began to assemble there. This tight-knit group of people who were always there for one another, found comfort on a grassy stretch of land beneath a young jacaranda tree while enjoying a distant view of the wide ocean. While others offered solace-seeking embraces, several joined hands in prayer as they prayed for solace and fortitude. An eyewitness reported that Nicholas had pulmonary edema and that his lungs had lost about 800 cubic centimeters of fluid. Sadly, his death was announced at 1.44 p.m. Ren Chapman, who spent three years training, sailing, and traveling closely with Nicholas, came out of the clinic shirtless and wearing a wetsuit around his waist. He addressed the group, offering their best wishes for Nicholas on his next voyage in an emotional voice. Ren remarked in a shaking voice, he died doing what he liked to do, and I know that. Nicholas' body was flown to Nassau, Bahamas, for an autopsy within two hours. According to the sport's governing body, the International Association for the Development of Apnea, Nicholas's demise is the first time an athlete has lost their life while competing internationally in the group's 21-year history.
His loved ones lamented his passing while remembering both his unselfish deeds and his bravery. It was noted that the year before, Nicholas had opted to sleep in a nearby church that had suffered storm damage rather than in a hotel or rental home. Being a devout Roman Catholic and the son of a mother and five sisters, he dedicated himself not only to his education, but also to helping to rebuild the church, taking part in the construction process, and finishing the new roof. Grant Graves, the head judge for the competition, said, he was universally loved, emphasizing the love and adoration that was felt by many people for Nicholas. Extreme sports have always been associated with the world of diving. In this world, split-second choices can mean the difference between victory and tragedy. They can mean the difference between success and failure. Skill, bravery, and pushing the boundaries of human capabilities are all the essential components of diving. Nicholas paid a heavy price for his choice, just like some well-liked divers have. So, dear divers, live to dive again on your next voyage. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you liked what you saw, click the bell icon, like, and subscribe buttons to be notified when we post another thrilling diving story.